for me. Jesus will. Jesus will. Who opens doors? Say, who opens doors? That I, that I cannot see. Jesus will. He said he will. 
Come on and put your hands together right now. giving we believe that worship through giving is not a pause in worship it's a part of worship so get those smartphones out you can give today by cash app uh, by paypal you can mail your offering in. you can come in through business hours do what you got to do uh, you can get your offering in amen well come on let's let's recite our offering affirmation we really do believe this we believe the lord for jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses benefits sales and commissions Settlements, estates, and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprising, finding money, bills paid off, debt demolished, royalties received. We don't just give money, we give money with a mark, money with a purpose, money with a destiny, money with an assignment, money with a mission, money with a vision. I am a 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 believer. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all-sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Love you so much and have a wonderful Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Love you. Happy Father's Day to you, Dad. This is Jasper Hatcher Jr. representing your eight children. We are wishing Jasper Hatcher Sr. a very special Happy Father's Day. We appreciate you for all you've done down through the years. Your leadership, your guidance, your wisdom. Thank you for loaning us money, giving us money, uh, feeding us. Uh, I know I had your shoes on sometimes in high school. You were probably looking for them. Uh, your favorite jacket, my favorite too. And I'm sure my brothers did some of the same things, but we appreciate just little things like that. And I just wanted to let you know that the children, all the grandchildren, wish you a very special, happy Father's Day. And there is some extended 
family also uh, that we'd like to include uh, number nine, number ten, number eleven, all that you uh, show special kindness to and they look up to you also. So we love you and that's all I got to say about that. There's nothing no one can do about it. This is coming from all of us. Happy Father's Day. somebody that shouted it was going to get a little wild because when you know what the Lord has done for you when you know what the Lord has done there are some things that happen that you know you can't give nobody but the Lord credit for it nobody can get the glory for this but God Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. I I'm looking at some people that I know your story. And I know what God has done for you. Have you ever been on your bed of affliction? <laughs> but God has delivered. I I'm looking at America. My uncle's here. Will of I, I'm looking at some oh, yeah. there, there are some miracles on your road yeah, 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 yeah. tell somebody you looking at a miracle t -t tell somebody you looking at a miracle tell them if you need proof that God will do it you looking at somebody yeah. he's a way maker he's a miracle worker He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Come on, stand with us, stand with us, stand with us. Hallelujah. 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 Just reach over and grab somebody by the hand. Reach over. Grab somebody by the hand. Let's... Let's pray. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have performed miracles in our life. Thank you, God, that you have opened doors for us. You've made ways for us. You've brought us out. You've, you've delivered. You've set us free. Thank you, God, that you've healed like no one else could do. God, when we look over our life, we can testify we've had some rivers to cross. But thank you, God, that we did not drown in the river. Thank you for your keeping power. Thank you for this moment right now thank you for worship and God we thank you for the word that's coming forth thank you God for the deliverance that's already taking place 
Now God, speak to us. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in our sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, if you believe it, give the Lord some praise. Amen. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I want to commence reading with verse 35 and conclude and climax with verse number 41. Mark chapter 4. I want to begin with verse number 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 reads like this. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto him, Let us pass over to the other side. And when he had sent the multitude, here's what he said sent the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships verse 37 says and there arose a great storm waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on the pillow and they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so faithful, fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they fearfully exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey? Verse 37, one more time, watch what he says. Verse number 37 and 38. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And when he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep, on a pillow and they awakened him and said unto him master carest thou not that we perish Jesus is asleep they lift a question master do you care I want to talk about I'm tired of this ship I want to talk about I'm tired of this ship I'm tired of this ship I think I'll ship I'm tired of this ship my brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen I think I must tell you that all of us on a daily basis encounter ships. And regardless of your ship, ships will always become shaky. Can I name a few ships? You may be on a companion ship. That, that ship's going to become shaky. You're going to have some good days. You're going to have some bad days. One man, one gentleman said to me, you know, marriage has its ups and downs. Some days I could just eat up. Some days I wish I ate up. <laughs> it just has its good days and bad days. There are friendships. Fr fr friendships. You're going to disagree sometimes. But true friends can disagree without falling out. We, we, we can have two separate opinions and still be friends. 
Because whenever you have more than one person, you're going to have more than one opinion. And so you have to understand that you're going to have differences. It, 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 your, your ship may be a citizenship and God knows we need some Lord and some love on this citizenship. Especially in this country is if your color, skin color is a little darker than others. This citizenship can become shaky. Then there are fellowships. E even in church, e even in ministry, uh, you you'll find some shakiness. E even, even in the house of God, you'll find yourself experiencing the shakiness of life. Then in leadership, oh help me have mercy Lord, you, whenever you're leading people, whenever you're leading people, there'll always be some people that don't want to be led, there'll be some people who think they can lead better than you, there are some people who will never let you lead, there's always some shakiness on every ship, but I've discovered that regardless of the ship, verse 35 helps us because 35 Five says that in the same day when Jesus came to them, he said, let us pass over to the other side. And when he had sent the multitudes away, they took Jesus with them. Yes. Wherever your ship takes you, you ought to take the Lord with you. Yes. Have I got a witness? It doesn't matter where life sends you. It does not matter where your ship sails to. You always want to take Jesus with you. It, when, whenever you leave home, you ought to take Jesus with them. Don't, don't, don't leave them on the counter. Don't leave them on your bedside. No, take the Lord with you because in this world that we live in, it's a dangerous world. It's a, a dark world and we need the Lord to lead with us. I, I like this because they get in a ship, but before they leave, they turn around and say, Lord, come with us. And when was the last time you invited Jesus on your ship? When, when was the, I, I, I know things look like it's going good. I know it's smooth sailing now. But down the road, there may be some issues. There may be some storms. There may be some situations. And you're going to need the Lord to go with you. But here's, here's what we encounter today. That, that on this ship, they come in contact with the storm. They come in contact with the storm. But here's what the first thing this text presents to us. Number one, the capacity of the ship. Number, number, number one, watch the capacity of the ship. Watch what it says in verse number 37. Here it is. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so it was now full. Jesus uh, uh, is, is going with them and he tells them let's go to the other side and they're traveling the lake of Galilee which was and still is infamous for sudden squalls they're surrounded by mountains at most points the lake uh, swirls violently and a strong wind enters Watch the text. It says that there arose, which suggests that the storm was unexpected. I got to tell you that some storms you can't plan for. So some storms you can't prepare for. When, 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 when the Hurricane Dorian or whatever his name was, uh, was going on, when I was in Miami, uh, Florida preaching, they were preparing, they were preparing for the storm and they, they were preparing. They, they came into my hotel and got on the balcony and secured the windows and I was looking at them prepare, but every storm doesn't give you time to prepare. Because there are some of us that can testify one moment we were living our best life, but the next moment a storm just popped out of nowhere. Have you ever just been living good? Things are going calm. Your family's well. You're tr no trouble on the job. You, ain't, you don't have any problems. But out of nowhere, storms come. But here's the problem that I have with the text. Can I argue with the text? The problem that I have with the text is that the storm comes, but here it is, Jesus sends them that way. Yeah. How do we handle life when the problem solver is the problem starter? How do we handle life 
when the one that can get me out of it is the very one that got me in it. Have I got any help? Why, why did Jesus send them in the direction of the storm? Did the Lord not know a storm was coming? Oh yeah, he knew. He, he knew the storm was coming. I, I, and, and I know Leland Staten is coming to us at 2 o'clock, but, but, but Jesus is the real chief meteorologist. Yeah. Tell, tell somebody, he, he's the real chief meteorologist. I, I, Jesus, here it is, this is what he had to teach them. He had just took them to the classroom to give them a lesson, and now he takes them from a lesson to examination. After every teaching, there's always a test. Tell somebody, after every teaching, is always a test. Every faith will be tested. But a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Jesus takes them from the classroom to the laboratory. Jesus says, now I've just taught you. Now I want to see, can you retain what I've taught you? The last clause of verse 37 says that the waves beat the ship so that the ship was now full. The capacity of the ship is now full. Here's what it's saying. I can't take any more. Somebody knows what that place of life is. That you cannot take any more. I'm talking to the real people. I'm talking to the transparent people in the house that says, I can't take any more on this ship. I'm talking to the real people that know how to cry out to God and tell them, I can only take too many, so many storms. I, I can only take so many tests. I, I, can, I can only take so much mistreatment in my marriage. I can only take so much of people hurting me. I can only take so much of people using me. I can only take so much of people mistreating me. I can only take so much of this dark place that I'm in. Fight after fight. Battle after battle. Tear after tear. You're tired. You're drained. You're fed up. And you're tired of this ship. Everybody can't relate to this. But, but the few of us that are real and don't mind what your neighbor think about you can testify sometimes the waves just beat me too much. Sometimes the storm is just too heavy. Sometimes I want to quit and throw in the towel. Sometimes I just want to jump overboard. The capacity of the ship is it's full. And when something is full, you just can't take any more. And it's not that you have no faith. It's not that, that you're not yet you're less than a Christian. Sometimes you just get tired. Sometimes you just get tired. As a matter of fact, that's what Jesus is doing on the ship. He got tired and he sleep. This shows the humanity of Jesus. Jesus is 100% God, but he's also 100% man. <laughs> Talk to me. He's 100% divinity, but he's also 100% humanity. On the God side, he hung the stars, the moon, and the sun. But on the human side, he walked under the stars, the moon, and the sun. On the God side, he turned water into wine. Ah, but on his human side, he got thirsty. Have I got any with you? On his human side, he got hungry. But on his God side, he's the bread of life. Sometimes Jesus says, I have to put my divinity down because my humanity rises and I just get tired. And here it is. If Jesus got tired, what makes you think I can't get tired? It's all right to get tired. If Jesus can get tired, then surely I can get tired. But, but, but keep reading, keep reading. There's the capacity of the ship. But not only is that the capacity of the ship, but watch number two, the concern in the
the storm. Watch what verse 38 says. Verse 38 reads like this. Here it is. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? The disciples have three concerns. Can I tell you the three concerns? Number one is a stormy sea. Huh. They, 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 they thought it was just going to be smooth sailing. The Lord has told them where to go, but yet they're met with the storm. Not only is it a stormy sea, but number two, it's a sinking ship. It's one thing to be in a storm, but it's another thing for your ship to start sinking. Because every ship can only take so much. And somebody needs to hear this before you lose your marriage. Somebody needs to hear this before you lose a best friend. Somebody needs to hear this before you lose a ministry leader. You can only put people through so much. I got any help. Yes, a storm is going to come, but what happened when our, when our ship starts to sink? Storm is sea, a sinking Savior, but here's the icing on the cake. A sleeping Savior. A stormy sea. Sinking ship. But a sleeping Savior. A storm is going on. But Jesus is asleep. Come on Bible readers talk back to me. It's a storm going on. The boat is about to go under. But Jesus is asleep. I'm trying to paint the picture. <laughs> it's a, a storm. But Jesus has the nerve, the audacity, the unmitigated goal to go to sleep. Jesus is sleeping. The disciples are scared. Here it is. The biggest concern is not the storm itself. Yeah. Their biggest concern is the fact that Jesus is on the ship but sleeping. Right. <laughs> and they lift the question. Master, do you care? Yeah. Master, carest thou not yeah. that we perish? That, that word master is translated in its original language as teacher. <laughs> Pre Preach Bible, Mason. And so by calling him master, they're saying teacher. By calling him teacher, they're saying we're in trouble, but teach us how you going to handle it. There's a lesson in every storm. There's no storm that you go through that God ain't trying to teach you something. And the truth of the matter is many of us are now on the other side of our storm. And we can testify there were some things he had to teach me because there were some things before my storm that I didn't know. Let me put it like this. If you've never been sick, you never know he was a healer. If you've never been broke, you never know he can supply your needs. If you never had any haters, you never know that he'll make your enemies your footstool. If you never had no confusion in your home, you never know that God can calm a storm in family. God is trying to teach you something. Here's what they say. Master, do you you got to understand, we're in Mark chapter 4. They're still trying to learn Jesus out. Right. <laughs> they're in the beginning stages of Christianity. They're, 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 they ain't been on the battlefield for a long time. They, yeah. That Jesus has just told them a few chapters ago to drop your nets. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. And, and come follow me. So these are new converts. These are new. And so they've heard what Jesus can do. Yeah. And they've even seen a few things. But here it is. What happens and, and how do we handle life when uh, our reality doesn't match God's resume? Mason. How do we handle life when my reality, what I'm going through, doesn't matter, doesn't match God's resume? How do 
I handle life when everybody come to church shout about he's a healer, but he ain't healed me yet? How, how do I handle life when, when you tell me he'll supply my needs, but my bank account is in the red? How do I handle life when I got haters and you told me that you'll get rid of them, but I got to look up them every day on my job? And they tease and taunt me. How do I handle life when my reality does not match his resume? He said he would do it, but what happens when he ain't did it yet? But, but can I push a little further? Can, can I push a little further? It, it, it's, it, it's one thing to have a stone, but what happens and what doesn't make sense is that I have stones, but Jesus is supposed to be with me. I, I can see having a storm and he ain't with me. But how is it that I can have this type of storm and he's supposed to be with me? The disciples, I, I like them because they're transparent. They're saying, how do you let me go through this. Matthew 14, the disciples have a storm, but they're not. Jesus is not with them. You, 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 you do remember the story, don't you? Jesus has just fed a multitude. 5,000 men, not counting women and children. He sends the multitudes away. He comes back. And here it is. He's in a mountain to pray. And he sends the multitudes away. And a storm comes, but Jesus is not with them. And the Bible says that that storm rises and, and they're crying, they're sinking and Jesus comes to them walking on the water. And when he gets there, they declare it looks like a ghost. But here it is, Jesus catches Peter right before. And in that storm, Jesus was not with them and it's a storm. But what happens when he's on your ship and you're still sinking? I ain't got no Bible that, no, I ain't got nobody that's going to help me argue text. What happens when we cool, but he ain't caught me yet? What happens when he's my boy, but he ain't blessed me yet? What, what, what happens when Jesus is supposed to be Jesus, but seemingly he's asleep? Here's what you must understand. Here, here's our take home truth today. That the presence of the Savior does not negate the presence of storms. Let, 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 me, let me say that again. Here's what you got to understand. The presence of the Savior does not negate the presence of the storm. Just because you have Christ does not mean you're gonna, not going to have chaos. The truth of the matter is many of us can tell us that's when we got more hell when we got on his side. I wish I had some help in it because there are some people who can tell them, I ain't before I met the Lord, before I came to church, I had no struggles, I had no issues. Everybody liked me, everybody got along. But when I gave the preacher my hand and got my heart seemingly, that's when things went wrong. Here's what you got to understand the presence of the Savior never negates the presence of storms. Watch what verse 37, verse 36 says. And when they had sent the multitudes away, they went into the ship. You got that? Verse 36 says that when they got in the ship, they took Jesus with them. That, that blessed me. And I need to go back to it because here it is. Here's what I've discovered. When Jesus is already on your ship, when storms come, you don't have to go looking for them. <laughs> you can handle verse 38. And verse 37, when you took care of business in verse 36. I wish I had some help in here. So many people wait until after Jesus comes. To then, after the storm, then y'all try to get with him. But here it is, when he's already on your ship. You don't have to go looking for him. It, it, and it doesn't matter what kind of ship you're on. If it's a fellowship. Doesn't matter as if, a, if it's a companionship. Come on. Does not matter if it's a citizenship. Does not matter if it's a relationship. If Jesus is not on your ship, it's going to be a hardship. Yeah. But here's the good news. If Jesus is on your ship, it'll be a championship. Come on, tell somebody, I'm a winner because the Lord is on my ship. The 
capacity of the ship, the concern in the storm. But here's where we'll shout today, the control of the Savior. Oh, the control of the Savior. Watch what it says in verse 39. Here it is. And he arose. Oh, God. I, I thank, thank you, Holy Ghost. And rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Watch verse 37. Verse 37 says, there arose a storm. <laughs> but verse 39 says, and he arose. Oh, I'm having too much fun. Verse 37 says, and there arose a great storm. Oh, but verse 39 says, and he arose. Y'all sleeping, y'all ready, ready to go watch football. But watch what you say. Verse 37 says, and there arose. But verse 39 says, and he arose. The Lord looks at the storm and said, peace, be still. It does not matter what rises in your life, God will rise up against it. And I'm talking to somebody, you got some storms in your life and it's rising against you. But God says, I'm greater than every storm. Here it is. Here's what I come to tell you. Don't throw, don't jump off the ship. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't quit in verse 36 and verse 37 because verse 39 is on the way. I know you may be in verse 37 right now and your storm is rising. But the Lord says, keep on reading. I'm getting ready to rise up against your storm. Is it anybody that can test me? I know he's greater than my storm. Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him, neighbor, I don't know what kind of storm you're in. But tell him, God is greater than your storm. Come on, some of y'all ain't moved yet. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. I don't care what your storm looks like. Tell him God is greater than your storm. Some of y'all ain't moved yet. <laughs> Said neighbor, you may be in a storm. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> but the Lord, <laughs> he's greater <laughs> than your storm. <laughs> God sent me on assignment <laughs> to tell some child of God today. <laughs> before you get off the ship, <laughs> he's in control. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody. <laughs> the Lord <laughs> is in control. <laughs> Come on, tell him like you mean it. Tell them neighbor we serve a God that's in control. Have I got a witness? Verse 39 says that the wind ceased. Have I got a witness? Verse 39 says that the wind ceased. That virgin sounds alright. But verse 39 in the NIV says and the storm died y'all ain't gonna help me preach this thing take a neighbor neighbor the storm died and God told me to tell you it's gonna die before you do have I got a witness look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor you're getting ready to outlive every storm in your life I feel like preaching is it anybody in the building today that can testify I got some storms called haters I got some storms called death I got some storms in my life but ooh, the good news is I'm going to live and not die verse 40 says the Lord after he looked at the storm he looked at the boys and said boys how is it that you have no faith you've been walking with me this long you've seen what I can do you were there when I healed the disease 
and the possessed. You were there when I healed the leprous man. You were there when I healed the man with the withered hand. You were there when I healed the man that was sick with the palsy. But now, since a little storm comes, now you're scared. He says, pull on your memory. Remember what I've already done. Remember what I've already seen you through. And if I did it then, I could do it again. Tell your neighbor, if he healed you once, he can do it again. If he healed you, he can do it again. If he pays last month's rent, he can pay this month's rent. Have I got a witness? If he got you that job, he can get you another job. And the Bible says that in verse 41, they lift up a question. What manner of man is this that the wind and the sea obey? him. I got to tell you that when you get delivered there's going to be some people that ask you how were you healed? How were you delivered? What manner a man was this? But you ought to tell him it was no bad end, but Jesus you know him don't you? That bad foot little boy from Bethlehem y'all know him don't you? Baptized in the Jordan y'all know him don't don't you? Yeah, Lord, reared in Nazareth. Y'all know him, don't you? Abraham's friend, Isaac's substitute. Have I got a witness? Jacob's ladder, Jeremiah's bomb. Have I got a witness? Solomon's wisdom, Samson's power. Y'all know him, don't you? Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's the lily of the valley. Y'all know him, don't you? He's the bright and the morning star. Y'all know him, don't you? He is a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. Y'all know him, don't you? Always have been. Always will be. Y'all know him, don't you? Set up from everlasting to everlasting. Y'all know him, don't you? He's stationed one mind. Don't change. Y'all know know him don't you he healed the sick raised the dead unstopped deaf ears gave sight to the blind y'all know him don't you but one Friday let me back up one Thursday have I got a witness he sat down with the disciples he broke bread said this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me likewise I'm a preacher by myself he took the cup said this is my blood which was shed for you but late Thursday he pulled off his garment girded himself with the towel scooped down washed the disciples feet have I got a witness told them I've given you this example now go you and do them and if you do these things happy will you be took him to Gethsemane it means the place of pressure he prayed to the father let this cup pass from me but not my will thy will be done they got him Judas kissed him and betrayed him for th I feel like preaching for 30 pieces of silver have I got a witness they marched him I've been trying to get here all day they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall hung him high stretched him wide hung his head why don't you give the Lord your life today Maybe saying I need to be baptized. I want to confess Stretch Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You can come. Maybe saying I've been saved. I've been baptized. I'm just looking for a 
church to be a part of. You should come. We want to make you family today. We want to make you family. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say you are my strength. Strength like yeah. Oh Lord, strength like So glad that it reaches Oh, in the fullness In the power You lift me
Jesus and let's thank God for the Hampton family coming by Christian experience. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. We feel like you're already family. God bless you. God bless you. We welcome you to the Locust Ridge Church. We love you. We thank God for your boldness and we're one big family, one big family. Come on, let's thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. We're going to walk with you on this new journey. We're going to connect you with our new members ministry. If you want to stand and walk, walk with them. If you'll stand at uh, this lady, Miss Payne, she'll walk with you. Uh, on behalf of Local Church Church, we welcome you to the family. We welcome you to the family. Come on, let's thank God for this. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wow, what an amazing word today. Uh, we believe that God is still in control. What a word today that uh, no matter what kind of ship you're on, that if the Savior is on your ship, you will survive. I don't know who this message before, but it's for somebody. You're tired of this ship. You're, you're tired of where you are. The good news is that you may be in the storm, but you're not by yourself. The, the presence of the Savior is with you on your ship. Hallelujah. We thank God for this word today. Perhaps this word touched you in a way that you're saying, Preacher, I want to give my life to Christ. Listen, you don't have to stay in the ship alone. The good news in the text was, God was with them. And as he was with them, he'll be with you. So listen, you can do a few things. You can email us. You can reach out to us on social media. We want to connect with you. We believe that you need a pastor. You need a church. You need a covering. You need a ministry to be a part of. We want to be your covenant partners. We want to be your covering. We want to be your church family. And so though we're not able to meet in the sanctuary, we're meeting virtually and God is still blessing in a mighty way. So if you want to do that today, if you're led to connect with this ministry, you can do so at this time. Well, thank you for watching our broadcast. We're excited about next week. We want you to join us next week too. There's a word and we're excited to connect with you then. Let's have the benediction. Now let the love of God the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest, rule and abide with us henceforth now and forever. And all of God's children said, Amen. Hug somebody and tell them you love you. See you next week. Be blessed.